Alrighty guys, so once you have imported your clips and then organized them, which again, I don't need to get into it, but this is something I would highly recommend you do. The next process and the next part of the creative process to get you onto actually editing yourself is going to be to create a sequence and most importantly, import those clips and import them in the best way and the most user-friendly way possible that I personally know. So first off, what I want to show you is the two methods of creating a sequence. Um, one of them is drastically easier than the other one and overall uh, the, the quicker way of doing it. But again, I'm going to walk you through both processes. So the first and uh, more, more kind of general way of creating a sequence is to go up here to File, New, and then click Sequence. And right here, you can choose between two options. You could either A, go for the sequence presets, which personally, I tend to stay away from, or you could simply input all the variables that your clips are going to entail. For example, the frame rate, uh, the, the editing mode, and the frame size. However, this stuff right here is great by all means if you are an expert at the variables like this. Obviously, you have to be somewhat technically advanced to be video editing, but I'm, I'm not the most technical person when it comes to all the, the, the data points and the variables like the, the frame rate and all this sort of stuff. So, um, importing all this stuff and having all this information in my brain ready to just put in here is not something I currently know how to do. And it's, it's really not a process that, I, that, that you even need to spend time learning. The best thing or one of the best things that Adobe Premiere Pro offer is the specialist way of importing clips to your timeline and the way that actually adjusts your sequence to be identical to the footage you are going to be editing with. And it is the, the simplest process, even simpler than going up here and clicking the three buttons it takes to get to the sequence thing. You simply go to one of your clips. For example, I could go to one of my DJ clips. We could go to, 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 to this one right here. Screw it. It, 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 doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Just any video clip you want to import. Simply drag that or hold and drag. And you can hold and drag and pull that either A into your timeline which will do the same thing. A plus will pop up right here, or you could drag it right down to here. Both of these do the same thing. You see how the, it goes from the, the cross to the plus, likewise the cross to the plus. So I'll just drag it down here, and boom. That will open up a new project, and if you go up here to Sequence, Sequence Settings, it will have specified the exact frame um, the exact frame rate, not only the exact frame rate, the exact frame size, and overall, it will have specialized and customized your sequence to be that of your clip type and to be identical and aligned with your clip type. So if you're one of those not super technically advanced when it comes to all the, all the frame rates and, and frame rate sizes, like I personally am not, um, by all means, that is the best way of importing it. And if you're dealing with all clips that are shot on the exact same camera, all at the same settings, then this is 100% the best way to do it because you're going to be creating a template or not even a template, just a set sequence size and it's going to coincide with all of the other clips. So all of my clips are shot on the exact same settings, meaning that all of my clips are going to fit in perfectly to this particular sequence and then you can just go over to where it has made the name of the sequence the name of the original file you brought over and just change that name. It's as simple as that. So we could change the name to project example. Boom. Simple as that. We have created a project. Now once I've created a project by dragging in a clip, I usually like to delete that clip. And I'm going to tell you why. is because there's a further process that really focuses on being user friendly and saving you time. And that right there is actually going to be a huge recurring theme. I'm going to try and keep bringing up throughout the course of this course, <laughs> not to throw a pun in there or anything, but the, 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 um, the repeated thing I'm going to be talking about is user friendliness. That is such a key part of my editing process. And I've tried to specialize, um, and try and include as many user-friendly tactics such as that way easier way of starting a sequence right there that I just showed you by dragging it here or dragging it here. That is by far the most user-friendly way of doing that. Just like 
simply opening up your file and dragging all your clips down here is the most user-friendly way of importing your clips. So that is going to be a huge theme throughout this. And this next method I'm going to show you before importing your clips is the most user-friendly way of actually getting your clips into your timeline in the exact right area. And that is going to be the use of the in and out points. Super, super huge monumental moment when I started utilizing the in and out points and overall it is a crucial part of my process. For example, these are clips that I got of these random DJs um, at this club and um, usually the majority of the clip is going to be kind of boring. Um, it's going to be a little bit crazy. Um, obviously it's pretty shaky here. The in and out points enable us to start this from a select point. So for example, if we play this throughout and we, and we see a nice point where we want it to start, for example, just like there when these strobe lights start going on, we could actually bring our dial until the strobe light comes on and add an in point. Now the way we would do that is simply by pressing I, the I key. Boom. Once you do that, you see it starts an in point. That means this clip, when I import it, it's not going to start over here at the beginning where, where clearly I don't want this section here. It's going to start right here. Boom. Exactly where these strobe lights start, where is exactly where I want it. And um, personally, I, I, I just leave the out point at the end because it's better to have more footage and delete some than not have enough. But also, hypothetically speaking, say this was the only section that we liked and then at any, anywhere beyond this point was just bad footage, we could also press O and that would create an out point. So that is an in and an out point. And then if we drag this clip in to the timeline, that is going to start exactly, oh, that, that's the wrong clip actually. Um, it's 215. So if we go find this 215, that is the clip that we've in and outed. If we drag that into the timeline now and delete that one, you see it has just selected this small point that we selected was the point that we liked. So that is a crucial part of my editing process and I would advise you guys to again get into the habit of doing this. It's going to save you a lot of time if you simply just work through your clips and put an in and out point for where, where you think the clip should start. So for example, this one again, I'm going to boom put that there where the strobe happens again. And I'm actually just going to work through all these clips here by simply, simply in and outing these clips. Okay, in and outing them is a crucial, crucial part. Um, obviously, you don't have to do this depending on the project. But for example, just here when he turns to the crowd, we could add an in point. And again, you don't have to add those out points if you don't want because it's better to import your clip and um, have all this extra room to work with where say you want to cut it off there so you would cut it, um, then maybe it was only here and, and you, you wanted it to be here or whatever. You know what I mean? So you may as well have more footage than um, not enough and, and, and you're worrying about that. But overall, quickly go through and in and out all these points. I'm going to come back just in one sec when I've in and out it and then we're going to work about, uh, we're th then we're going to go about rather importing those clips into our timeline. Okay, so now I've just quickly in and outed all of my all of my clips. Boom, you can quickly see an in and out point at all of these clips. Next is importing. And importing is an extremely simple process. I'll show you right now quickly how to do it. You could drag this, boom, and let it go. And there you go, you've imported. However, there's one little trick that could help you just uh, not have such a cluttered and crowded timeline here. If you don't for example, need the audio. Um, so for all these clips, um, this is going to be a promo video. So here, I'm obviously not going to have the original audio of this club. It would sound crazy and distorted. I want to be throwing over a backing track. So I don't really need this audio to be attached here. And rather than having a whole nother layer that I would need to mute otherwise, I could just import solely the video. So say I just wanted to bring in the video and not have that audio layer attached. I would go to my clip up here and instead of just dragging this directly over, which would be the normal way of importing, I would instead go up to these two icons here. And what these two icons mean here is this one on the left means drag video only 
and this mean this one on the right means drag audio only so right then if I only wanted the video I would simply just drag from that icon and only have one layer of video on its own instead of having to drag both of these layers here and having um, just a layer that I wouldn't need right there and either have to mute it here or right click and unlink and then delete it which again is just far too more uh, far too many clicks than simply importing it through here and likewise if you just wanted the audio um, Obviously for my clips this wouldn't be the case because the audio would just be crazy But for whatever yours would be likewise you would simply hover over the drag audio only and throw in the audio on its own and that right there guys is a brief overview of creating your first sequence and importing your clips into that sequence in the most user-friendly way I personally know how